new absolutely crazy paper by Meta. They call it the free transformer, but I will call it the thinking transformer. They literally introduce a latent thought. This is similar to hierarchical reasoning models, to JEPA, to variational auto. So this is this is like it has one, it has a thought to first generate and then generate the output. So the way they make it reason is they have 65,000 something possible plans and they are they are learned during training and then during inference they can pick one of those 65,000 something plans and then add that plan to the token generation so it's just a big dictionary of plans and each of the plans is a vector that has same size as the token token vector and then you pick a plan you add it to every token vector while you are generating so plan can be like uh, generating formal email and then generate like in this formal way you can skip a bit forward for the detailed breakdown or the of the architecture use the timestamps the chapters we know that classic autoregressive transformers don't have a specific part for planning or reasoning they just generate based on the previous tokens so we will introduce a new part a new vector that's like a latent vector that's like a thought or a plan for the next token it will generate so it will now generate based on the previous sequence and this new plan or thought this is such a good idea this is such an obvious idea in hindsight because this is uh, present in many other architectures so the role of this latent thought would be for example if it's writing a movie review it can decide if the movie is good or bad in this latent thought and then write just like we think first and then we speak so the token generation is low level it's called like low level because it's it's not like high level abstract thinking over the whole context it's just low level details so we will add the high level abstract thinking to the low level next token generation so as the llm is writing the movie review and there is no like high level plan that it's a good movie then for every next token it needs to infer if the movie is good or if it's what is it writing about it's writing a positive review so this is inefficient and a lot of repeated thinking or inferring or computation but if it had a high level idea then that low level computation could be used better for uh, some details and other things so model doesn't need to rediscover every for every token what it's even writing about and even a single wrong word generated by the model could confuse and influence rest of the generation of the tokens but if you have a high level plan then that can actually fix and tell the rest of the tokens what it, they, it needs to write about so our LLM is the decoder only transformer but for our latent variable we will use a encoder so our sequence is not only going through the LLM but it's also going through the encoder that's going to generate our latent thought and then for example this could see the sequence of text and say this is a po good movie so the latent thought the latent variable would be positive review and then that would feed into the decoder together with the text so we use encoder for the latent variable that's important however from practice uh, decoder only stuff works better without encoder so maybe somebody will figure out a way to generate latent variable within the within the decoder without encoder so just the next uh, next token generation somehow maybe that's just maybe gonna happen maybe it's not gonna happen i'm not sure join my school to become ai researcher we have all of these courses it's for free for now i'm gonna make it paid soon so hurry up learn to become ai researcher link below the video let's take a better look at the architecture itself so during inference 
these orange blocks are completely bypassed. So during training we have all of these blocks, but during inference we don't have these orange blocks. We start from the sequence of tokens, so from the first token to the t minus one, which is which means like the t is the next token we are predicting. So we have from first token to t minus one. So then each token is converted into a vector or replaced with its vector with embedding. So this is the classic large language model. So you can watch my videos coding DeepSeq V3 from scratch and coding Llama 4 from scratch to learn more about how large language models work. So this embedding dimension would be 4,096 for the 8 billion parameter model that they trained. So they trained 8 billion and 1.5 billion. I can quickly show you the numbers here. So 8 billion parameter model with Llama 3 architecture, 32 uh, transformer layers, 4096 width or dimension of the token, uh, 32 query heads, 8 key value heads. Trained with 20 billion tokens, which require 256 H100s for 24 hours. Or with 1 trillion tokens, which takes 5 days. The model is quite small, so it can eat 1 trillion tokens in just 5 days? Actually, this is quite fast. This is something doable, like for me, if I just have like a bit more money. Or maybe it's not, I'm not sure, what's the math here? So then, we go for, for the first half of the layers. So, in 8B model, it would be first 16 layers. This is the classic decoder uh, layers that contain attention and feed forward. So each layer contains attention and feed forward. So first we go through half of them, processing these, this sequence of embeddings. And this is normal for every LLM. And the output here now splits. So we have this yellow part that is only present during training. And here its job is to look at the, this sequence that we just processed and generate latent variable Z that's like a thought or a plan that corresponds to this sequence. For example, this would be like a movie review is positive. So this zeta are some parameters, learnable parameters. It's initialized randomly at the beginning of the training and then it's learned. And once it's learned, it's always the same. For any sequence, all the time, it's always the same. So parameters that are learned, it has same shape as number of tokens times dimension for each token, the vector for each token. But importantly, how do I explain this? So it's going to be just one learned vector that has same shape as one token embedding. And then it's just going to be multiplied. That same learned vector will just be multi copied a number of token times. So it's one vector. So it's going to serve as query. Now imagine that query is a question. So this will be same question for every token. And these tokens are going to be used as keys and values. So same query for every token, whatever the key and, and different keys and values for every, they come from tokens. And its purpose is to force this encoder to extract high level global information from the tokens. So then this latent variable up here can contain this high level information. So its purpose, the query, the question is just to extract high level information from tokens. So global information, important information for reasoning and planning and thinking. So imagine this as being same task for every token to extract same information from every token about this high level stuff. So the output of this encoder layer, it's going to be also sequence of token embeddings, but every token embedding will now be enriched with information from other tokens in a way that answer this question about global context, high level a meaning. So basically every token will also have this, let's say, 
information that the movie is positive so there should be a positive plan so all of these tokens it are talking making a positive uh, review for the movie so whatever information was extracted from this high level question is now infused into every token and this is not causal so this sees all of the future tokens as well as previous tokens and as i said this is all for training so we'll explain why and how but just know that now every token contains high level information from previous and following tokens entire context and the next layer encoder readout fully connected this will project every token's huge 4000 long vector that represents that token into very small 16 numbers long vector age so 4000 something to 16 and now i'm gonna try to explain this a bit more complex part so imagine this as taking the huge vector all of the information this token has and making a decision so we don't need so much information we will now just create a decision from all of that information and this decision will just have 16 numbers this vector of 16 numbers those are floating point numbers so now this vector of 16 elements contains our decision based on the all of the huge vectors information so the decision can be that we are writing positive critique for the movie and previously this all of the information is actually information that we need to make that decision to be the positive movie and then each of these numbers in that vector will be converted to either zero or one so the higher the number the higher probability it will be one the lower the number it will maybe probably be zero so then we will get here for every token we will get a vector of 16 numbers where every number is zero or one and actually i should uh, show it here just to reiterate to make sure everybody understands so we have some numbers and we pass each number through a sigmoid function and sigmoid function will take a this number and put a, i'll put a number between zero and one or zero percent and hundred percent and let's say sigmoid outputs 80 percent or 0 0.8 then we will do a coin flip where there is 80 percent chance this number will become one and 20 percent chance this number will become zero so then we will just get a number a vector of 16 ones or zeros and then we can look at that vector as a binary number so we can then convert that binary number into decimal so if we have like zero 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 everything zeros and then one 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 at the end that binary number is actually seven in decimal so we just convert that 16-bit binary number into decimal so this decimal number will just be our latent space our plan so this decimal number will be used as a plan and if you look at there is 2 to h so 2 to 16 possible different decimal numbers or plans that we can have so that's 65,500 something and then this is a bit interesting we will encode that decimal number as one hot vector so this will be a massive vector of 65,000 numbers and all will be zero except if our let's say our decimal number is seven then seventh place will be one and every other place will be zero so we have 65,000 something long vector so that's two to power of so it's one hot encoded our decimal number so just one at the at that index of the decimal number good example here with gemini so let's say we have integer seven seven is the number so now we uh, create a vector of this size sixty-five thousand, and then at index seven we put number one and zero to every other position so that's one hot encoded so that's why the shape here will be 
for every token, we will have this one hot vector that's 65,000 something long vector. So 2 to the power of 16. So it's one hot encoded. So a decimal number one hot encoded. And to summarize, now for every token, we have a single decimal number between uh, 0 and 65,000 something. And this is how the planning works. We have 65,000 something long vectors of 4,000 elements. Each of those vectors is a plan. So it has same dimension as the token embedding. And it's learned. The plans are learned, they're static. Once they're learned, they don't change. And we will use our generated integer that we just generated here to pick vector from these 65,000 something possible plans, possible vectors. And we are one hot encoding it because that's very fast way to pick uh, that plan corresponding to that integer number. So here are examples of plan vectors. Write a formal academic style that could be plan 7, the row 7. Or generate Python code to solve a list manipulation problem that can be plan 512. And there is 65,000 something of these plans. And during training, each token will have its own plan. And then every plan for each token will just be added element wise. So you have plan vector and token vector, and they're just added element wise. And then it's processed in the same way to generate next token. But when you add two vectors element wise, you add their information. Also, so now this new vector will have information from the token itself, from this previous processing here, and the information about the plan as well. So that's happening during the training. But during inference, uh, it will apply same plan to all of the tokens in the sequence, starting from the first token, or starting from the first token after the prompt. So there will be some prompt, and then the next token, it will figure out the plan, and then apply say same plan for every because during inference you can you don't have uh, the tokens that are not yet generated generated so you cannot use this part during inference this is actually quite weird during inference they pick a random plan and then generate tokens based on the random plan which i don't understand why would they pick a random plan out of there is absolutely no choosing of the plan is just random out of 65,000 something. So I'm not sure how that makes sense. So here simply Z is size of the token and it's just injected and added to every token and it's random. I'm not sure why it's random. The intuition there would be that plan would be still something learned like it gives structure to the tokens. So it's not like just random numbers. It also it does inject some structure or some rules into generation. But I don't know why they do it randomly and why they need like so many of them then. Or maybe the main purpose of this plan is that during the training, it forces the transformer to learn richer representation, richer latent space, and it forces the coder to be more flexible and to generate different stuff based on the plan. I'm not sure exactly why, but I see a good future and idea in this where other people could actually make uh, this plan not random and maybe somehow selected based on the prompt. Gemini says that it forces the model to become a much more powerful generative paradigm. Instead of just producing a single most likely output the model learns to represent the entire distribution of possible valid outputs because it has all these, these different plans that would yield different results. I think that will be it for this video. Join my school, it's free for now. We have all of these courses to become AI researcher. I'm gonna make it paid soon, so hurry up, a link below the video.